play Mordekaiser, they said. It'll be fun, they said. After spamming over 21 hours of games on the PBE server, I can finally bring you the experience of exactly 9 reworked Mordekaiser games. That's roughly 8,000 mastery. So without further ado, let's just jump into it folks. Let's start things off with a quick recap of Mordekaiser's new abilities. When I use E, as you see here, I pull an enemy in a direction and also deal damage to them. Next you should see a green aura surrounding Mordekaiser. This is his new passive, Darkness Rise. It's pretty incredible, it kind of combines Leandri's Torment, Nasher's Tooth, Sunfire, and even Boots. You see, after 3 basic spells or attacks against champions, Mordekaiser deals percent max health damage per second surrounding himself and gains 5% movement speed. Now this first part of his passive scales throughout the game, so this is really just the beginning. The next part of his passive is that his basic attacks will also deal 40% ability power bonus magic damage. Starting off on Mordecai's, you'll probably do the same thing I did, which is severely underestimate how much early game power you have, and you'll probably back off when really you could have killed. Unlike all previous renditions of this spell, Mordekaiser's new Q is no longer an auto attack. Instead, he smashes the ground with Nightfall, dealing magic damage to all enemies in the area. Magic damage that is increased many fold against single targets. Last in Mordekaiser's arsenal of basic spells is his W, Indestructible. Now to be honest, for me personally, reading this spell did not do it for me at all, and I really had to learn how to use this just by practicing over and over again. So I'll read it to you, and then I'll try to explain it in a way I think you might understand. Mordekaiser stores 30%, 15% of all damage he deals, takes, as a potential shield. Got it? Now, Indestructible grants him that shield, and maybe cast a second time to consume it, healing for 40% of the remaining value. You with me so far? Excellent. Do you see that white bar beneath the yellow one? That's Mordekaiser's potential shield meter. The higher that is, the more shield you'll get when you activate W, as seen here. That entire white bar just became my shield, okay? Now if I consume the shield by casting W again, that entire shield will be destroyed and in exchange I'll turn 40% of it into a heal. So when you're trading with champions in mid fight, you never actually want to destroy the shield because the heal isn't all that great. But you want to use the W in between fights for the heal. It's pretty handy that way. The Realm of Death! Mordekaiser banishes his target to the Shadow Realm for 7 seconds, stealing 10% of their core stats for the duration. If Mordekaiser manages to slay his victim within the Shadow Realm, he'll consume their soul, keeping the stats he stole until the target respawns. Your success with Mordekaiser's new R all depends on two questions. The when to ult, and the who to ult. Mordekaiser's ult is very flexible in this way as it has many different uses. In this first one, we're appealing for our ADC. Old Mordekaiser, at best, would be able to throw his W onto Jin and heal him when Rengar got too close. But as you can see, Jin is running for the bush. So the moment he got too close to the bush and Rengar got to the bush, Jin would be dead, and there's nothing Mordekaiser could do to stop it. New Mordekaiser, however, is a totally different story.
In the following three clips, I'm going to really try to hit home for you guys the importance of knowing who to ult. In the first clip, you'll notice that I went for the AD carry. This seems like the obvious choice, right? Wrong. As you can see, after killing the ADC, my teammates were unable to deal with Tom Kench. In fact, while I was in the death realm, one of my teammates actually died to the Tom Kench and Yumi combo. If I had taken Tom Kench instead, separating him from Yumi, maybe my teammates would have been able to kill the AD carry with ease, since Tom Kench was no longer there to peel for him. My decision resulted in all of us dying, and that's not good. Now in the second clip, I don't have my ultimate off cooldown yet. I used it to kill a Teemo. Again, this was the wrong decision. With the release of Yumi, champions like Tom Kench are extremely powerful even in 1v3s. Through a combination of shields and sustain, Tom Kench is able to 1v3 us with ease, despite me being 12 and 4. Mordekaiser's ultimate is not something you should use lightly. As the first two clips showed, Tom Kench plus Yumi is an extremely powerful combo. And in fact, off the top of my head, I can't think of any champion combination that can stop that. The shields and sustain are insane, but Mordekaiser's ultimate can take care of that no problem. Watch as I finally figured out what my job is in the team fight and separated Kench from Kitten for the kill. As I stated before, knowing when to ult is also key in succeeding with Mordekaiser. In this first clip, I baited the Vlad pull with my E, right? As soon as Vlad came out of his pool, I knew he no longer had any escapes, and I was clear to ult him. In the second clip, I didn't do this. Unfortunately, I ulted at the exact same time Vlad pulled. Because Vlad was untargetable, my ult fizzles. You want to avoid fizzles at all costs. But not only that, you also need to avoid ulting people who are going to be able to stall you out for 7 seconds. Examples are not limited to Tom Kench's eat you or Vlad's pull you. There are all kinds of champions that can kite you and waste your time and you really want to maximize your use with the ult. In addition to who and when you use your Mordekaiser ult, where is also pretty important. I don't have the clip on hand but there was this one time I ulted someone in the base, in the enemy base, and they just went through their little base gate and I had to walk all the way around through their tower aggro just to get at them and by the time I walked around they just walk right through the gate again. Waste of 7 seconds, I tell you. In addition to this, however, Mordekaiser's ultimate literally affects the terrain of the map. As I went in on Ezreal, Ezreal makes his way to the Blasting Cone, expecting salvation, only to be hit with damnation instead as I remove the Blasting Cone from the map. Tentacles and balls. I'm not making a penis joke here, folks. Mordekaiser can castrate pretty much everyone in League of Legends, and it's incredible. Take Syndra for example, she spends all of her time juggling the balls until she has enough to smash you with them. She tries that shit on Mordekaiser, Mordekaiser ults her, her balls disappear, and he kills her. Illa Oi spends all that time amassing tentacles, presses R, fat heal, fat damage, not anymore, Mordekaiser ults her, your tentacles disappear. Same thing goes for Yorick's ghost, it's gone. You take little Teemo here, he tried to peace shoot Mordekaiser to the point of annoyance where, as usual, the champion will chase him into a field of death mushrooms. Now against Mordekaiser, I press R and his mushrooms that have already been placed are gone. However, it is true that once you're in the death realm, you may place new shrooms, which Teemo does in the second clip here, but it's still really incredible how Mordekaiser can interact with other champions and their strengths. Essentially, Mordekaiser sapping them of their power, and it's really, really, really amazing. It's one of the things I like best about New Mord. So let's talk about Old Mordekaiser versus New. Old Mordekaiser, teleport kind of felt underwhelming. All it really did was help you manage your creep wave, be there for dragon, and really just not miss farm. New Mordekaiser, however, teleport ganks are now a thing, and they are a thing to be feared. Old Mordekaiser did not have to kill his lane opponent to be relevant in the game. His wave clear was so good he could farm out the lane and be useful in the mid game. New Mordekaiser is completely reliant on getting kills because his wave clear is horrible. The reason for this is A. He only has 3 damaging abilities, his passive, his Q, and his E. With his passive, you have to aggro the enemy laner through using spells or auto attacking. In either case, you're pushing the wave. You push the wave with spells because your spells are all AOE and you're inevitably damaging the enemy minion wave along with the enemy laner. 
If you're auto attacking the enemy laner, you're drawing minion aggro because your minions are attacking his minions, but his minions are not attacking your minions. Thus, you're pushing the wave, making yourself an easy mark for ganks. This is not good. Mordekaiser's E, while it does deal consistent damage to the minion waves, is on a very, very long cooldown and is Mordekaiser's only CC. Using up your only CC in lane is just asking to be camped by the enemy jungler. So Mordekaiser's wave clear creates quite a few big problems for Mordekaiser in the lane phase and looking out for them is something we're going to have to really adjust to. Mordekaiser's only consistent wave clear is his Q, but you can't be very selective with who you target because it is, again, an AoE. CSing under towers is very difficult because of this as well. New Mordekaiser does not attack towers in a satisfying way. He rams the butt of his mace into the tower as though it were a battering ram. He's much like Eloi or Braum in this regard. Old Mordekaiser's auto attacks into towers was satisfying to look at. I'm hoping that this is just a placeholder animation until they finish it. As expected, Mordekaiser is not free of his bugs quite yet, and since he's still in the PBE, this is really fine. But I figured it's worth mentioning that not only does Yumi have a couple of weird bugs with Mordekaiser, so does Ryze. For those of you like me who have resigned yourself to the fact that you're probably not going to get to play Mordekaiser as often as you used to, you're going to need a couple of pocket picks to put those normies in their place. I strongly suggest adding Mundo. There's no minions now to block him. So that was his mistake. If he hadn't ulted me, I would have had to worry about him dancing between minions and missing my Q. But as soon as he ult, I, I should. Um, Justice, I have a lot of opinions on New Mordekaiser currently. The biggest and most important is that I don't get to play him often enough. Go oh, ahead, use your ult, I dare you. Hey guys, new counter pick to Mordekaiser top is Mundo, okay? I thought it was Jax, but it's fucking Mundo. This is gonna be beautiful. I can't wait for the rework to drop now. I'm not even gonna be salted when Mordekaiser gets picked from me. I'm just gonna pick Mundo and it's gonna be beautiful. Man, I'm gonna be a fucking Mundo unstoppable force. Wow, <laughs> I just, I missed, wow, I missed those three CS and the, ah, oh, I missed Cleaver Point Blake right after I said I was gonna be a really great Mundo player, that's funny. Oh man, here we are at the video's close. As a special thank you to everyone who actually watched this entire video and made it to the end, I'm going to reward you with a special Mordekaiser technique. If, like me, you've been playing Mordekaiser non-stop on the PBE, monitoring all of the new news on the subreddit and the discord, then you probably already know that Mordekaiser's E is not just an engage. It doesn't only pull people to you, it can also push people away, which is incredible and very, very valuable to learn. So essentially how it works, you cast your E just in front of you and all units that are behind you within range will be pushed back. E is supposed to be a pull, but you can turn it into a push depending on the position of your enemy and the position of your cast. So just bear that in mind and try to be conscious about it because I've made this play and it's really awesome.